This is example two with applied optimization. So uh, a farmer has 400 feet of fencing to close off a rectangular section of land. Uh, part of the fence will be used to divide the rectangular section into two pieces, and we want to know uh, what should the dimensions be so that the total enclosed area is a maximum. Okay, so here, um, now we're going to follow these same steps again. So if you want a copy of these steps and a copy of this worksheet, check the video description. Uh, there's a link in there. You can click it, open up this worksheet's uh, download, print it, uh, if you want to follow along. So um, step one, draw and label the picture if possible and assign variables to all the quantities in the problem. So here, you know, this time it is possible to draw a picture, right? Because we're talking about a farmer with 400 feet of fencing he's going to close off a rectangular section of land. So we can draw this section of land we're going to close off. Okay. Um, so just draw a rectangle like this. And then um, part of the fence will be used to divide the rectangular section into two pieces. So let's go ahead and divide it like this. Okay. Now you might be wondering, how do we know to divide it over here and not like over here? How do we know that we're not dividing it this way? Um, and the answer is, it, I, first of all, I don't know that. And second of all, it doesn't actually matter. Okay? Um, so there are lots of different ways we could draw this, lots of different ways we can label it. Um, and depending on how we do it, uh, the math along the way might be a little bit different, but um, we'll get the same answer in the end as long as we do it correctly. So again, to summarize, we don't have to divide it like this. We could divide it like this if we want. It does not actually matter. So just keep that in mind. Um, now we want to label this. So let's call this x. So this will be x. Uh, this whole distance here will be y. Okay. So if this is all rectangular, this is x, then this is also x right here, right? And then uh, this also has to be x, right? This whole distance here also has to be x. Um, and then this up here is also y. Okay, so we have to label everything like that. No, we don't have to, but it's more clear that way. Okay. So now um, assign variables to all quantities in the problem. Okay. So again, we don't have to label every little piece here, but as long as we just label this and this, that's really enough for us. Um, but you know, it's good to be thorough, as thorough as we can be. So now uh, assign variables to all the quantities. So we assigned uh, x and y here. Okay, so um, x and y are the dimensions. So let's say let x and y uh, be the dimensions. Okay, so those are the dimensions we're looking for. What should the dimensions uh, be? so that the total enclosed area is a maximum. So that's, you know, we're looking for these values of x and y here. So let x, y be the dimensions. Um, let a be the area. Okay, so that's the total area enclosed by this entire rectangular piece here. Okay, so the total area there. All right, so now, um, what else do we have? We have a perimeter, right, 400 feet of fencing. Um, so not uh, kind of like a perimeter. So we have 400 feet of fencing, but you know that's that's a constant, not a variable. So we don't have to assign it a variable because it's just a constant. Okay. So um, that's it for step one: draw and label a picture if possible, and assign variables to all the quantities. Now step two: write an equation for the quantity to be maximized or minimized. Now what are we trying to maximize here? We're trying to maximize the area, right? We want to find dimensions x and y so that the area a is a maximum. Okay. So uh, a is remember the area of the entire thing here, so it's just x times y. Okay. So even though we have this little piece of x right here, uh, we, that does not affect the area at all, Okay, because this is really just an x with no width, or no length, however you want to think about it. So it's just x, there's no width to it, just x, so it does not affect the area. So the area is just uh, x times y. Okay. So this is what we want to maximize. We want to find x and y that give the maximum possible value of a. But you know we can't do that, right? because a is expressed in terms of x and y, so what we have to do now, that's it for step two, but now we have to go to step three. Reduce the equation to one with a single independent variable. This may require secondary equations that relate the variables to each other. So this is the step where we ask ourselves, um, is, there, you know, is there any other information that we have that we could use to relate x and y to each other? Uh, and yeah, what else are we told that we haven't used yet? Um, we got 400 feet of fencing, okay? So um, this is all fence right here. This is fence, 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 and more fence. So all of that together adds up to 400 feet. Okay, so that's what we know. So let's go ahead and write an equation for that. So uh, x, okay, x plus y plus x plus another y plus this third x equals uh, 400 feet, we're told. Okay, so uh, 3x plus 2y, right? So 3x plus 2y equals 400 feet. Okay, now from here, what we want to do 
Um, and in general, what we want to do with this is uh, modify this equation to or, you know, solve this equation for one variable in terms of the other, and then stick that expression into this equation here to get this in terms of just one variable. So we can go either way, really, but let's, uh, let's solve for y in terms of x. So 2y equals 400 minus 3x. Now we divide everything by 2. So y equals uh, 200 minus 3 halves x. Okay? So no matter what's going on with x and y, we know that they're related by this equation here. So what we could do is take this guy now, and this is the whole point of step 3. Okay, we're using the secondary equation here. So this, this is our secondary equation. We're going to use that to express this in terms of just one independent variable. Okay, so x and y are the independent variables, and a is the dependent variable, because a depends on x and y. Okay? So now what we're going to do is take this, uh, stick it into this equation here. Okay, so now a, let's say a of x now, uh, equals, so this x is still there, and then times y, we just found out, is 200 minus 3 halves x. Okay, so now we just want to simplify this. So now a is just expressed uh, only in terms of x, which is good. Now let's simplify that. So a of x equals uh, 200x minus 3 halves x squared. Okay, so that's it for step three. Reduce the equation to one with a single independent variable. Okay? And this may require secondary equations that relate the variables to each other. So again, here's our secondary equation that we started with here. Um, and then we modify that, manipulated it, solve for y in terms of x, stick that in here. Now, if you're wondering, could we have solved for x in terms of y? Yeah, we could totally do that. You know, we can get x equals some other expression in terms of y, stick that in here, so that the area is just in terms of y. Um, and that's totally fine. There's nothing wrong with that. It might be a little more complicated, because here you'd have to divide by uh, 3 instead of 2, and you'll have 400 over 3, uh, and then 2 thirds. So the numbers might be a little more complicated, but it will still work. Okay, so the math might be just a tiny bit uh, more difficult along the way, but it will absolutely still work as long as everything is done correctly. Okay, so now um, we have this. Now step four, find the domain of the equation found in step three. This, sometimes this is kind of tricky because you just got to be careful. You know, forget about the application for a sec. If you just look at this equation, there's no domain restriction, right? 200x minus 3 halves x squared. X can be anything, but we are restricted by the geometry of the problem. Okay, so x represents a length. So for the domain... Um, x represents a length, so x has to be strictly positive. Okay? Uh, some people might say it's okay for x to be zero. You know, that, uh, that is physically possible. You, know, you could have a zero length, but then nothing would be happening in the problem. Okay? Nothing would be going on. And that's, you know, that's, no, uh, that's not interesting, that's no fun, we don't care about that case. So let's just say x has to be strictly positive. Uh, some instructors might say otherwise, say include x equals zero. Just be careful of that um, in case your instructor is one like that. Uh, just be careful of that. Okay, so x has to be greater than zero, but x also, x can't be too large, because if x is too large, then y can't exist. Okay, so what we also need is uh, y strictly positive. Okay. So x and y both have to be strictly positive, but again, some people might say it's okay for y to be zero. But anyway, um, now our domain, so step four says find the domain of the equation found in step three. Well, the equation we found in step three is just in terms of x. So it's not okay to just say y has to be greater than zero. We have to express this restriction in terms of x. So how do we do that? Well, we use this fact here. Okay, so remember, y has to be strictly greater than zero. Well, what is y? y is 200 minus 3 halves x. Okay, y is this. y is 200 minus 3 halves x. And what we have from this restriction is this has to be strictly greater than zero. Okay, so just to recap real quick, x represents a length or a distance, so it has to be strictly positive. y also represents a length or a distance, so it has to be strictly positive. But our domain restriction has to be expressed only in terms of x. Now, y greater than 0, since y equals 200 minus 3 halves x, then y greater than 0 is the same thing as saying this. Now, let's solve this equation for x. So let's um, add 3 halves x to both sides. Multiply both sides by 2 thirds. So uh, 2 thirds times 200 is greater than, uh, so if we multiply this by 2 thirds, then we're just going to get, uh, that cancels, we just have x. Okay? So uh, 400 over 3 has to be strictly greater than x. Okay? So remember earlier we said x can't be too large, and this is the uh, sort of upper bound for x here, so x has to be strictly less than 400 over 3. Okay? And uh, this restriction is the exact same thing as this restriction here. Okay? So this y greater than zero, you know, we have to start with that because y represents a distance or a length. 
and then use this fact, okay, use the fact that y is greater than zero combined with this fact here to get uh, this inequality here, solve that for x, and we get this, okay? And now, now we can express our domain strictly in terms of just x. So y greater than zero, that's the same thing as saying uh, x has to be strictly less than 400 over three. And then in interval notation, that's, um, that would be zero comma 400 over three. Okay. So that's our domain. And again, remember, we have to express the domain in terms of just x. So that's why it's not okay to say y greater than zero. So that's what's going on there. That's our domain restriction. Now uh, that's step four. And step five, use calculus techniques to find the desired quantity. Okay, so why do we do this domain thing here? Because now that we're going to do the calculus, we have to make sure that all of our critical points are actually in the domain. Okay? Otherwise, they're not uh, critical points. So uh, now what we want to do is find values of the dimensions, x and y, that maximize the area. So we're trying to find you know, stuff about the maximum of the area. So we just uh, do calculus, find the critical points, um, et cetera, et cetera. Do the first or the second derivative test. So let's one step at a time here. So a of x is 200x minus 3 halves x squared. So a prime of x is 200 minus uh, 3 halves times 2x. So that's going to be minus 3x. Okay. Now to find critical points, we figure out where is the zero, where is it undefined? Well, 200 minus 3x, that's undefined nowhere, right? It's defined everywhere, so we're okay. So we just take it, set it equal to zero, and then solve for x. So uh, let's say minus 3x equals minus 200 x equals, uh, let's divide everything by negative 3, so the negatives cancel and we have 200 over 3. Okay, so that's our only critical point here. We want to make sure, is that in the domain? Well, 200 over 3, is that inside this interval? Um, yeah, 200 over 3 is less than 400 over 3, right? So 200 over 3 is definitely less than 400 over 3. You know, it's half as much, and of course it's positive, okay? So, um, you know, if you're not sure about any of that, um, you could just toss it onto a calculator. So uh, 200 over 3 is about 66.67-ish, uh, and 400 over 3 is twice that. So 400 over 3 um, is about 133.3 uh, 3 ish okay? So yeah, this uh, 200 over 3, that is inside the domain, so that's good. It's a critical point. It's where the derivative is 0, and it's in the domain, so that's great. Now we want to figure out, does um, this actually give us a, uh, does it give us a max or a min? And, you know, by the nature of the problem, you know, it's the only critical point we have. We're asked to find stuff about the maximum. So, yeah, it's going to give us a max. Otherwise, the problem just doesn't even make sense. But, you know, it's not okay to say that. Uh, we do have to go through all the steps be very thorough. So, in other words, we have to use the first derivative test or the second derivative test. Um, now, we could use either one, but the first derivative test is going to be a little more work and it's going to tell us more than we need to know. So we don't really have to go that route. Let's just do the second derivative test. Okay, because the first derivative test is going to tell us where everything is increasing and decreasing, things like that. Uh, we don't care about that. We only care about maxes and mins and not increasing and decreasing. So let's do the second derivative test. Okay, so uh, a double prime of x is going to be uh, 200, the derivative is 0, minus 3x, the derivative is minus 3. Okay, so in other words, a double prime of x equals negative 3. So that's just a constant, right? So no matter what x is, the second derivative is negative 3. So in particular, uh, a double prime to 200 over 3 is negative 3, which is a negative number. So what does the second derivative test tell us? So the second derivative says that, uh, so then, um, a of x has a local max, has a local maximum, uh, when x equals 200 over 3. Okay, so that's what the second derivative test just told us. So here, because we have a critical point and the value of the second derivative at the critical point is negative, so the second derivative test tells us that the uh, original function a of x has a local max when x equals 200 over 3. Okay, so that's great. Uh, we're not quite done yet because we're asked to find the dimensions, so we found one of them. Okay, we found x, now we have to find y. How do we find y? Uh, use this equation here. Okay, uh, sorry, use this equation right here. 200 minus 3 fx. So we know, um, so the area is maximized. So the area, let's block off a little piece here. Uh, the area is maximized when uh, x equals 200 over 3. 
uh, since y equals 200 minus 3 halves x, then uh, y equals 200 minus 3 halves times uh, 200 over 3, right? So we know that the area is maximized when x is this, and we also want to figure out what's the value of y, because that's what we were asked. We were asked to find the dimensions uh, that give us the maximum area, and we know that happens when x is 200 over 3, so what does y have to be? Okay, so let's just simplify this. Uh, 200 minus 3 halves times 200 over 3, so the 3's cancel. 2 goes down to 200 uh, 100 times, so then y equals uh, 200 minus 100, which is 100. Okay? So the dimensions are x equals 200 over 3 feet. And again, be exact as uh, whenever you can, as often as you can, as, as for as long as you can. So we can just keep that exact. But remember, it's about 66.67. Um, and then y equals uh, 100 feet. Okay? So that's the answer to our question. If you want to answer in a complete sentence, I'm out of room over here. But the answer would be uh, the dimensions that give the maximum possible area are x equals 200 over 3 feet and then y equals 100 feet. So that's it for example two, um, where we have a farmer with fencing, closing off a rectangular piece of land, and it's divided into two. So that's what's going on there, and here's our answer. So example two with applied optimization.